Remember the Star Wars cantina? Everyone loved it, except George. This was one of the things he always thought could be done better sometime. Well, I'd, I'd always wanted to have the cantina be more than what it was. It was originally designed to be uh, lots of very exotic creatures. And when I shot it, I just didn't have the money and uh, the makeup man was ill and couldn't finish the masks. And so I was always left with um, sort of a less articulated monsters and less effective scene than I thought was necessary. <laughs> This is the monster rally of George's dreams. The setting is the palace of Jabba the Hutt, godfather of the galaxy and host to aliens from a thousand worlds. Jabba's band was designed by Phil Tippett. He's head of the Creature Shop at Industrial Light and Magic. More than 80 creatures lurked in the shadows of Jabba's palace. That's more monsters by far than have ever been assembled for a single movie. They all began to take shape like this, as small models called maquettes. Most of them were sculpted over and over again before they were approved. A team of 15 artists, aided by other craftsmen, worked 13 months, the last six of them on a day and night basis, to translate the maquettes into full-scale clay models of puppets and masks. Well over a million dollars was spent on creature development and construction. Molds were made from the clay models. From these, the monstrous faces and forms took shape in latex and rubber. Painting was painstaking. The creatures had to have that lived-in look. Maybe they were not of this earth, but they had to seem as if they were of some earth somewhere. The young Frankensteins frequently cracked up each other. It was a way of easing the strain of a long, hard job. Make way, make way, pig in transit. Even when the masks and costumes were molded and painted, the work wasn't finished. For most of the featured creatures had to be able to express themselves. Some of these pig guards, for instance, would have a large range of facial movements available for their close shots. The muscles controlling expression were actually either wire cables or air tubes connected to a bellows out of camera range. Over the months of work, something of the personalities of their creators just naturally worked its way into the finished creatures. Cy Snoodles, lead singer in Java's band, began her career as a dancer. But Max Rebo was first and last a keyboard artist. George made frequent visits to check on the progress of the creatures as they were being developed. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a... Uh, George's way to open the door. Yeah, it's like he's coming down to the... One of the more amusing things will be to have this... Have a vocalist. How about Snooty? See, so we can have her be the singer. Sure. Yeah, it'd be great. She's got such a tiny little mouth. <laughs> She's going to sing lyrics. We're going to have to articulate her mouth. Well, yeah, it would have to be. Uh, what it means is we'd have to figure out a way of opening the mouth and, and making it at least open and close. 
thing is, it doesn't have to be articulate. All it has to do is be able to open and close. It's a binary system, which it goes like this, 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 wow, this, 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 this. And that gives us some room to yeah. come up with some lyrics and make a song. It also gives us a great way to spotlight. Okay, ready? Miss Snooty's basic movements were provided by puppeteer Tim Rose, working below her stage. His legs were connected to hers by rods, so she could duplicate his steps precisely. Her microphone was also controlled from below stage, also by a rod. This, in turn, controlled movement of Snooty Snoot, which was connected to the mic by a wire that would be invisible in the final film. More wires connect Snooty's upper body with another operator, who works her as if she were a giant marionette. Her song was written in English, but translated into Hatiz, Java's official court language. Pack-up night in the creature shop turned into a farewell party. ago in a galaxy very, very near, George Lucas imagined a world no one else had ever seen. When he placed it on screen in Star Wars in 1977,